I met with the city staff to continue the discussion of providing these community benefits. Tonight, we'd like to present to you our plan of what we believe will bring the most benefit to the community. As Dan mentioned, all of the suggestions were evaluated for a broader community benefit within the department of the uh, on the long-term maintenance as well as the technical and feasibility studies uh, and the overall cost. We collected all your suggestions and know that what was repeated and important to you were the following. A paved trail from, from Scarlet to Jane and from Boulder to Corbett and Walker, where the curb and dirt paths are used by the community. An outdoor meeting area near the Marie Bowling to Lower Park. More tree planting where possible. Screening of the running meat transform station. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is, is go through the slides quickly and uh, show you the benefits that uh, we see that we can promote. So the section of Scarlet to Jane, where the curved dirt path is located, we're going to provide you with a new three meter wide actual cave um, It's this red line that you see along the plan. Okay. So along the trail there's going to be rest areas as well and we're going to be using armor stone as seen. At the existing path, and currently there's an existing path that leads that connects Foxwell to Eileen Street. Next to that path, which is this, this path right here, next to that path, we're going to be building a meeting area. It's going to be actual fate, and there's going to be random um, uh, armor stone rocks for seating. And the radius of that 70 circular shape meeting area is roughly 10 meters, or give or take 30. Thank you. 
uh, evening, everybody. So, um, your name again? oh, sorry, uh, Johnny DiFilippo, uh, manager of major projects in GTA. So, uh, my team basically works on all the projects that we create. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I'm here to really talk about uh, the project that we sort of are wrapping up at Ready Meet, as well as the upcoming project uh, that you see on some of the posters if you have a chance to look at Ready. Uh, so, the status of the existing project is that we're basically wrapping up. Um, the work is for the most part done. There's a bit of cleanup on site. Uh, Transformers are ready to start supplying power to Toronto Hydro. Uh, just uh, final connections on their side that have to be made. But uh, it was a successful project and it's wrapping up as I said. Um, now what we're uh, getting into is the refurbishment of the existing. So what we did with the first project was increase the capacity uh, for Toronto Hydro and add a uh, sort of new transformer station, if you will, adjacent to the existing. Uh, the project we're going to uh, start now is to the end of life assets at the existing part of the yard. So, um, looking at the, you know, the overhead shot that you've seen before, um, now we're going to be working on the east side, uh, east part of the station. And I'll try to describe a little bit about what that work will entail, but it's uh, really a different need. Uh, originally it was about expansion, now it's about taking care of uh, end of life equipment. So, um, just to give you a sense of what you can expect, um, basically uh, the work that we're going to undertake is to remove uh, old structures and uh, equipment in the yard. So in the southeast area, there's you know, a lot of steel and equipment uh, that will be removed. Uh, we're going to replace the two existing transformers that are there. So uh, you know, we saw still two sort of shiny new ones, and there's two older ones, those will be replaced. So net new will be the same before. Uh, the construction of a new switch gear building. So the change here is that we're going to be building a building at the northeast corner of the property. And the equipment that was in that uh, that we're removing the structures from the old steel and breakers and that will actually be put inside of this building. Uh, it's a different type of technology. Uh, it'll be indoors, so you'll see a building there in place, um, less of the structures and more of a sort of a building in this picture. A typical one uh, on the boards at the back you can see later. Um, there will be uh, installation of new feeders, so some of the feeders that are along Boulder that uh, came into the station before at overhead will now be underground. Uh, that's Toronto Hydro's work, so we're working with Toronto Hydro to sort out details of that. But Vegetation maintenance that is going to have to happen uh, close to the station fence uh, to give us some construction access on the east side, as well as some trimming of trees in the park area. And that uh, sort of coincides with the risks of comments around new planting. So we're trying to uh, create a bit of a more sustainable vegetation plant in the park in the area. So uh, we'll trim trees that are sort of growing, as well as uh, the new trees to sort of fill that. Um, and also, uh, so the, the dirt cell natural stone wall. So uh, just to give a sense of, you know, you saw a timeline of starting the wall and finishing it like two years later. Um, the reason for that is that we are completing work at the west part of the uh, station fence, so we're going to start uh, replacing some of the wall there, but we can't really finish the work in the eastern part because of construction activity from that area. So it's a bit of like a, not really a filler job, but it's, uh, there's the right time to do it, so it sort of gets stretched out over a longer period of time, but it's being done to coincide with the um, also, you can expect uh, on the east side of the station the corridor. So the reason why we have to close down the uh, trail access that's on the east side of the station is because that area will be used for construction later. So our contractor will be uh, setting up some parking in a uh, sort of staging area, and therefore we have to sort of block the area off to use it. So uh, that is something you will see on the east side, and the trail access that's there now will be blocked off, unfortunately. There'll be some, uh, you know, uh, construction dust and noise as usual uh, with respect to all city bylaws. So uh, the usual uh, in terms of sort of seven, 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 I believe, the uh, schedule the area. Um, so we're starting that uh, construction in the spring of uh, this year. So in the next few months, uh, we'll start doing some work to prep for the contractor and the building construction will begin. Uh, we'll be done the building completed by the end of the year. And some new work will be done. And then there'll be further work in the yard that will take place. Sort of <coughs> so I'll ask Danny about to explain what happens next, but essentially um, it sort of wraps up the final part of the presentation. We've got uh, some boards in the back that you can do a look at uh, the simulations. Uh, you've got your comment boxes. There's people from the team that are here tonight as well, so if you have questions about uh, the project or the community benefits, uh, you can bring people to ask. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I would say this just includes the, uh, the, the 
first half of the, uh, the evening. Uh, I absolutely encourage you to uh, take advantage. We have a, a lot of staff here to uh, ask questions, have some meetings and discussions. But uh, before we do that, why don't you know if there are any general questions that you have for myself? So the things that you've had that are way over the improvement that you have been uh, I'd say that so the, the general uh, choices of the trail are I mean, the, the tower maintenance or the uh, vegetation maintenance and the retaining wall on the sidewalk, I guess you're saying on Boulder, uh, yeah, that the wall, yeah, the wall was looked at as, as okay, it's not, yeah, that wall is the thing yeah. The part is. yeah, the vegetation on the side of the hill is something that um, I would have to check to see uh, where his license is, but if the vegetation is over the front, just to maintain, we can, again, put a, put a, put a yeah, that's okay, I mean, uh, I think the tower itself is not relying on, the, like, the foundation of the footing for the tower is not relying on Still, the hills okay for the health of the tower. I think we're here next time. One of the things that had kind of evolved from the very beginning of our discussions was the idea of public art and community engagement and the beautification. But what this plan, although a stone wall sounds nice, it might be nice in a fireplace or a small house, but to have a very large entire city block completely encased in what is essentially a building material. So it would be pretty much like having an entire building, two transformer stations in size, completely surrounded by a wall with no art. It was never intended or desired by the community, and we had wanted art. And we don't, I don't think there was ever a problem actually seeing the transformer itself. It was the idea that we have something nice to look at and that we engage the community so that they're a part of it. And I, I guess when I looked at that wall the last presentation, the only thing I could think of was that it's like putting a giant building. You've already got an industrial footprint. Now you're putting yet another industrial footprint or a building structural footprint around it to make it even a bigger footprint. Whereas the chain link, as much as it might sound ugly and cheap and old-fashioned, there had been some discussions about how that could be used or that some other type of wall could be used that would incorporate art and the idea that the community could get involved and I know the city's interested in actually participating in trying to find ways to produce art with community input and engagement so that the community is a part of this whole thing in the end and not just kind of going around it on a trail. And I, I guess I, I have a concern because that wall would be hot would not allow the air to flow and would create a heat island effect at the top of the hill, whereas you already have a lot of uh, 10,000 people in those high rises, and now they're going to have that extra heat, extra wall, extra industrial thing, when in fact if you left the chain link and put art intermittently with the trees and made it a kind of a different effect, you would have air flow, and then you would reduce the heat and 
the sunlight, which is going to reflect off the white walls, back up onto those buildings that used to look out on the green space. So I don't see it as a benefit, although I like the idea of the wall in a small area. Having the whole thing encased in that stonework is pretty intense. And any kind of wind is now going to funnel around that and cause wind tunnels along Wolner, for example, or the alleyway. And so it doesn't really enhance the environmental impact. It actually increases the environmental impact for the human use of the beautiful trail that you're suggesting. So I think it kind of takes away, it, there's a visual element that on the surface seems nice, but ultimately it wasn't that we didn't like looking at your transformer, it's actually kind of a cool thing to look at, it's not that ugly, but it's that we could have used this opportunity to create an engagement and art opportunity, and it, there's no art in your plan, which is, which is I think, my, my top concern. Okay, so I can, can, talk about I can at least, um, so, so the concern that we you know, heard over a number of meetings was the visual sort of effect of the station. So it was big and it was, like, I, you know, We saw, it was visual in terms of, we yeah. kept saying art. Every time we talked no, about so, it, it was art. So, so the reason for the screen, so the wall, you know, there was different options looked at in terms of screening. So there was a solid wall, there's wooden fence, there was chain link with cutouts, there was all these yeah. you know, proposals. Yeah. Uh, we looked at, you know, uh, all those proposals and chain link with the cutouts, uh, was sort of cancelled early on because uh, using our like our station walls uh, <laughs> as much as it looks like it's a barrier to what's inside it's, it's still an asset that we have to maintain it's still part of the station mm -hmm. and we didn't want to encourage use of our sort of station wall as a means of art installation so oh. that's why we went away from the cutouts on the chain link now on the other hand uh, your request for art um, while it may not be in this plan specifically we are I think we're speaking to uh, Jason Dana earlier yeah, we've asked you to make sorry some, yeah. yeah no you, go ahead I mean we, we have some Plans to you know try to work with the community and, and, and this uh, sort of streetscape, streetscape was the streetscape that yeah. you had offered to do the introduction to. So if there's even a chance that we could do sort of wood like frames almost that art could be changed in right. between, we could look right. at potentially doing it as part of the park or you know in certain areas or it just behind seemed, to the fence yeah. or to the yeah to the wall. It, it wasn't it wasn't yeah. compatible with the fence, but it doesn't mean that art couldn't be done in the park area in other ways. Um, I think the model that we sent in our original slides was a picture of Wells named John, and it was the, uh, in case, overhead, yeah. it was the, uh, it's the advertisement, John and John, yeah, Wells and John, okay, yeah. so that yeah. they have advertisements there, so yeah. we thought we could do something simple with what have our, yeah, and I think the, the model in that case, that's a significant, I mean, I, I don't know the cost, but in right. terms of building yeah. a new structure and being able to do that is supported by the ad revenue, I guess, so, wasn't an option or a table to this area. So in terms of air movement and heat island effects, I guess... I'm not, I'm not personally an expert, like, so I'm I just, can... It's pretty obvious. If you build essentially what used to be a free flowing area, and you're turning it into a giant walled area that becomes like a building, which basically is going to funnel air and wind that might cool the area before, which is not going to happen anymore. Um, yeah, I... I... I personally can't yeah. uh, you know, comment on whether that's accurate. I mean, I, I would think an uh, eight-foot high wall in an area that size is, is not going to be that intrusive, but I, I'm not a you know, weather It does seem like a very can. large transformer station to, to corral in a giant wall. Okay. It is a big wall. So can we, sorry, there's another yeah, question in the back. Yeah. 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 We are on the west side of Scarlet Road. Okay. And yeah, it seems to be it seems, it seems to be all you know ignored in the whole planning process. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the hydro field is extremely under maintained, to say the least. You know, uh, first of all, the pavement that you are extending up to Scarlet Road, why not extend it all the way to the uh, to the to the west side of uh, Scarlet Road as well? People live there too, right? Mm -hmm. Secondly, my bigger concern is that uh, you know uh, trees along the golf course on the west side of Scarlet are so far down, their branches are hanging so far low that the kids are hiding there behind them and doing weed. This is what I spotted last summer, this, this uh, the summer that passed. A few years ago, there was a murder on the uh, on the hydro field there. If this thing continues, I am pretty sure that there are bigger crimes will happen again, you know. So if somebody needs to maintain those, uh, that side of the, 
of the high road. So you say the trees, when you mention the trees along the road or along the corridor? Well, along the corridor. golf course's fence. The along the corridor. Of, some of those uh, uh, branches are so low. The kids, the, last summer what I noticed, there were like 13, 14 year old kids who were doing weed over there. Mm -hmm. Now, this can lead to bigger crime. And that's happened there before. So what I need, what we need to see there is cleaning and pruning of those tree branches. No, that's that's absolutely that's reasonable. No, that's that's okay. Yeah, yeah, but, we'll, we'll but we don't we don't see it on the plants that you have over there. We're totally being forgotten in that area. Well, and we the, have lived so many years in that community, and we keep getting promises, promises, promises. We finally got a, a cable wire fence to block traffic from getting through a driveway to the back of our houses, which should not be accessible by cars. Sure. We have young kids there, we have seniors that need a little bit of a walk back and forth. You're talking about Scarlett going to the other side of Jane. Why forget about our side? You know what the reason why we- It, it needs to be included. We have attended numerous meetings and voiced our opinion about that. Something needs to be done. We're entirely, paying our taxes as well. Entirely agreed, and uh, uh, that's the reason we are gathering everybody here to review the plan, take a little bit of feedback. So we had mentioned about uh, about pruning and uh, and more routine maintenance of what's there. We're we're very happy to, to make sure that's a part of the plan. My on on the same topic. We we are all a few of us are from the west side uh, of Scarlet. First of all, I believe that the grass on the east side of Scarlet and your pro, pro, uh, prime area is maintained by one contractor. And on the west side of the uh, Scarlet is maintained by someone else. So years ago, when we moved there about four years ago, you couldn't tell where your grass and the golf grass met or ended because they were both meticulously kept. Since the fence went on along the golf course, all the trees grew, all the shrubs grew, and people were dumping garbage. Unfortunately, and thank you for that fence, because when that first house south, okay, on the south side of the hydro field, decided to pave his driveway, he took the fence off. So his driveway became an access way even when your gate is closed. So it took, unfortunately, some of the people that live on Eileen off onto the golf course are some of the culprits that are actually dumping the garbage there. We've been asking for this garbage to be cleaned and the trees to be cut down so that there won't be no places to hide it for years. Because if I see Joe blows garbage there, oh, I'll just add some more to it, no one will know the difference. Whereas if you clean it and cut the grass right up to the fence and keep it clean, just like it is done on the east side of Scarlet, where you cut the grass right up to the fence of the property of the houses, and it's kept clean because otherwise those neighbors will complain. Right now, it's only the golf course. Nobody sees it. It's hidden. Like the gentleman said, guys are coming in there hiding, doing all sorts of things that are, shouldn't be being done. Like we said about 15 years ago, three kids walked in and only two walked out. And we watched one getting shot. Okay. From there is front. garbage being dumped there and everything. So all we're asking is that property behind our houses is kept tidy just like the east side of Scarlet. If you can continue the pathway instead of stopping it at Scarlet because work was done behind our houses, the poles were changed, the wires were changed, it's not like you guys stopped with the work at Scarlet, you continued with the work west of Scarlet, so why not maintain and beautify just like the other side? Yes. I mean, yeah, we, we had a uh, meeting consultation about the degree of, of sort of trail work that we could do, and we focused on the area that had the gardens because it had people using the area for the gardens as well as the park area because of the park access. So that's why the work that was done in those two sections, what we didn't do in a, call it a um, regular stretch of corridor. I mean, the city's got park license in those areas, so putting the trail in means that the city will maintain the trail in the future. Uh, the trail that's on the uh, west side, or the if there's a casual trail or a dirt path that's through that section, I don't well, believe the city that, has a park license in that area. There, there used to be the same pathway that's gravel, just like on the east side of Scarlet, mm -hmm. west of Scarlet. 
But when the golf club needed to build their club, and they didn't allow their heavy equipment to go on their nice paved road, you guys let them throw dirt all over the nice grass so they can track their big trucks through the hydro field. And, when they, and we were promised that they would pick it up and remove it and return the grass to the way it was before. When they did it, they just bulldozed it all, all over the place. Yeah. So you know what I And the trail disappeared. So we're hearing a few things, and, and stop me where I'm off, is uh, we're talking about the potential to extend the trail uh, beyond where it, where it terminates right now at Scarlet. Yes. We're talking about making sure that the shrubbery and low-lying bush is pruned, and we're talking about general maintenance as well, to be up to the standards that you see across the majority of the rest of the corridor. Yeah. Yes. Um, so what I can tell you is, uh, is the, the latter two, so the, the pruning and the maintenance, we're going to look into that that should not be a, an issue, and we'll make sure that, to, to your point, uh, that that work is reflected as a part of the plan. One, one comment I may add about the pruning, I should have taken pictures, but some of the shrubbery and branches and cutoffs that are just west of the first pole, west of Scarlet, is actually the contractor you guys hired to trim the trees from getting too close to the wires, and they just yeah. and they just left them there. It's you know that so it's a good again. Then then he oh I'll add some more, and she said oh I'll throw some more garbage, and that's how it snowballs. Uh, no, that's that's a good comment. We'll make sure that that's that too is reflected. As far as the path, we have to look into it because there's a question of licenses and, and some real estate elements. But uh, we will commit to to going back on that, and at least making sure that it's a, whether or not it's something we can do. And we can report back on that point, yes. No, I just want and, and you were at that meeting. You were at one of our meetings, too. Yes, yeah. we were. Yeah. And we mentioned That's, the same thing. At, at yeah. that meeting is when I pointed to these guys that that fence along this house that's yeah. south of the field, and they did the fence. So thank you very much. So at least now, yeah. if there's any garbage more dump, it's the people that are living next to me, uh, not people <laughs> just driving off Scarlet. I just want to make a comment about as far as the maintenance on the west side of Scarlet Road. Uh, I, uh, not with you personally, but with Hydro, um, uh, because of the issues that we've had on the west side, and, and, and even to, to close the um, the corridor off, because what's happening is trucks, cars were going in, driving in, dumping their garbage, and that. So I've had a lot of on-site meetings on that, and Hydro promised me that they would maintain that area. So this has been a constant issue. Uh, with Hydro, so, okay. but I did meet with you, I met with uh, totally another, another group. Well, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's a good forum to have this out, so uh, we'll make sure that that's all reflected. So it's that's really always been an issue. Good, so we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of that issue. Any other uh, I was hoping to hear more about the, um, the access points, so the trail, the trails come and go, but I think now what we have on Jane Street, for example, of going west into the gardens is a kind of a, I don't know if it's a rope kind of a thing that goes between some <coughs> low stakes. It's a kind of a, a very, maybe it's a chain rope that goes between some posts. What, what is the plan to replace that? So if the condition of those posts is part of similar to the, the posts that were mentioned at um, Rockliffe, if they're broken or No, no, they're, they're, they're okay. It's just that you can't get in and out. Like the, the entranceway is only about a foot and a half wide. Okay, so, so if the trail is formalized, then we'll make sure the, the width and the axis of the, the trail is suitable, right? Like we'll okay. make sure that, you know, three meter wide trail with, I don't know, a meter either side of space so that they can get in there. But right. uh, it's probably because the trail obviously is not formal, so the ropes may have pushed. The idea behind that is to not have people driving up the corridor, right? It's, uh, three meters might let a car go through? Yeah, pretty close, but that's you need the access to the trail. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you know what the reality is? The city has a, has a tremendous amount of experience with, with yeah. that kind of thing. They've got standards, and we can work with yeah, them yeah. to ensure that, that the distance is, is the right. Because you, know. you, get, you have that problem. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Just jumping into another it. point about lighting. Is there any hope of any kind of activity? So we, uh, we, we did move away from, from lighting. There were a couple of reasons for that. One is, it was of the suggestions that came from the, the larger community group that we had, one of the more controversial ones, that there were differing opinions as you to... You want lighting into people's houses? Lighting into people's houses, uh, some people in the, the taller buildings there suggested maybe it might attract people to certain areas they didn't want to attract people. It was, it was a good idea, so what we, we felt was, you know, should the city want to undertake a little bit more consultation specifically on that point? 
if they wanted to look at that, we would be very supportive to uh, to, to work with them and, and, and help affect that. But broader community consensus was something we wanted to make sure we had on anything that we did do, and, and that one had a bit of a split. Sure, okay. yeah. And there was a question back here. Yeah, yeah so I just had a quick question on that. My question was uh, if we had Can you speak up, please? Sorry, just environmental assessment? Is that what you're yeah, environmental impact assessment, which can be shared with the community if there is any. So that, uh, two, I was trying to look at a disaster plan for the community living there in case there is any. Those are my two questions. Disaster plan? Sorry. Like the a, environmental assessment, if it can yeah, be shared? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a disaster plan in case there is an unexpected event that happens from this place. What is the plan for the community living in that place? Oh, you mean from our station? Yeah, yeah, from the station. So anything can happen, an explosion can happen. So oh, what is the mitigation? Document. Yeah, we can um, share that as well. We can share that around. Just if people want to yeah, share their email, we'll, we'll reach out because I don't know if everybody wants an environmental assessment email to them, but uh, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have that question there. And if you want a, a, a link or whatever, we can send that your way. Uh, any, more, any more questions? Uh, so thank you very much for meeting with us and sharing all this. It was really helpful. Um, so the uh, residents of Terry Drive, we've been working as a group and, and speaking to folks in um, community relations. Is that what you call Dana? I don't know if your name's Dana. No, I'm Dana. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Dan. She's Dana. It's <laughs> Just um, to these. And uh, so, so, you know, we're certainly pleased that there'll be trees uh, planted uh, along Terry Drive. Um, I hope the others don't die. You just, we just have more trees rather than replacing trees. Yeah. But uh, one of the other th things that we talked about was also, because there's a new pole, two poles side by side, that didn't exist before, uh, one of the things that was shared with us was that there would be increased vegetation along that area to hide that thing as much as possible. Because it's, I mean, I feel like it could touch it from my house. Yeah. So that's one of the things. I mean, I know that there were a number of things that were, they brought up, uh, like a what, what's it called? What is it called? Thing? Uh, something like a, a green, yeah, some yeah, kind of wall. green wall, like a green wall yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but um, I'm not an expert on how to beautify something like this. I mean, the trees is good. I mean, you really can um, look beyond the, the towers, but uh, I know that there was a specific mention to increase vegetation where there is this new tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with that, um, with our consultation with, this, with the city urban tree planting program, with the, with the staff there, we did, <clears throat> excuse me, we did uh, make mention that the Terry Drive community does want to see more trees where the new towers are. Um, so part of that planting on Terry Drive is to uh, fill in those gaps where there are gaps in that existing row of trees. Fill those in and also uh, plant more trees within that area, within that row, so that when those existing trees die, because they are at a mature state, when they, when they die, there will be trees already planted to replace them. So you're going to have a continuous row of, of green trees along Terry Drive. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's part of the city's program. So if in a few years when the, when the existing trees do die and you see more gaps, you can always call the city and, and ask them to come and look at planting more trees because it's, it's, a, it's a program that's free to the community uh, through, this, through the city. Um, but, but we, we did. Want to start ahead, right? Like as much as possible. That's right. To hide so, yeah. The power that wasn't so, there with my discussion with the city, with the Urban Tree Planning Program Committee, um, I did mention the fact that we want to. Um, we want to help hide or, or screen the towers from the residents on Terry Drive. So they know about that. 
I don't know exactly where they're going to be planting the trees, but that was conveyed to them. So yeah, and I was just going to add. So we're we're kind of working with them to finalize the location. So perhaps before that happens, we can share. Sure. Yeah. We're really talking about location. Yeah. yeah. With you guys. It's the same list where we're really. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I but, think but that I think though that what they're asking is rather than yes to plant the trees, but at the same time they're looking for vegetation, like you know those plants. That's, that's um, right. Yeah. That's right. Um, green, like a green wall. So uh, the planting the trees is a good thing, but I think what what the residents would prefer would 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 like to add on to that would be a, a, a green wall. Like a so green, green, last am I correct? correct? No, absolutely. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like a living I, wall. Yeah. Yeah. That's remember, right. That's what it's called. A living wall. Not a green wall. I remember from the last meeting we had in March of uh, last year, and you mentioned because you cannot really plant too tall of a tree because of the, those type of poles. So it's going to be really short. It really yeah, so, so, the, so There's no tree there right now. Like I don't know what you're talking about placing it. So where? On, where would you want the living wall or green wall exactly? So, so a few years ago, there were a lot of vegetation along the wall. So there was a fence. Yeah. Excuse me. I mean fence. Right? There's no On the north anywhere. side of the north corridor. Side. Yeah. But hydro cut them all off. So you got built the. Uh, yeah. It's 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 plain that. Yeah. So sorry. Can you clarify the the corridor and the businesses? So there's a fence. So you're talking about screening the industrial area. Yeah. Well, I well that's On the other side of the court. Yeah. So there was. So there's. So how it all started was there were there was dense vegetation against that fence, right? Dense vegetation, and then hydro cut it, right? Cut all the trees. Yeah. There were trees, uh, including uh, shrubbery yeah. that covered the wall. And then from, uh, from that, we started having conversations with Hydro and the city. So to us, that was a green wall, and now it's gone, mm -hmm. right? Now, what we, what we were talking to community and relations was, was to create um, along the road um, trees, which is what I think what you described here, um, plus increased vegetation to cover the towers, I mean, we can still, like, we see the wires, we see it less now because it's not hanging so low um, from the uh, oh, what are houses. It? Yeah, from the houses. Before we used to be able to see the actual <laughs> wires. wires from our house, but now it's lifted to some extent. Um, and then, as Councillor Nunziata mentioned, we had also talked about a living wall. It, to kind of repl to to replace what we had before. Okay. Just a suggestion. Could maybe after just so that we can break off and do sure, some maybe maybe, maybe why don't we why don't we talk yeah. about it? Because I I'm hearing like the fence, the tower, the road. Like, Certainly. So maybe just a better understanding we'll talk about. But just just on that just point. Just on the street but, side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, have, in, like in reference to um, Honourable Member Hussain's comments about uh, youth unemployment in the community, had you considered a uh, workforce development plan against this project? Uh, like, what do you mean to, to like, like as a community benefit? Um, as a standalone or, or directly no, related part to of it. employment for the, yeah. the project itself? Yeah. So like apprenticeships, youth oh, apprenticeships, um, like a percentage. I don't yeah, believe so there's uh, local we did, like, yeah, we, by project or could yeah, be. Yeah, for local. Like I'm thinking like especially the local, local community that's being impacted by this. In terms I, of I flyer just, delivery, I think. Yeah, I can right? just yeah. come in. We have Thank tried you. to um, utilize uh, some students in the community mm -hmm. um, to deliver the flyers for today. Um, reached out to the city has a community development. That's uh, not what I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about construction jobs. Okay. Construction okay. Jobs. okay. This is another aspect of how we try to involve the community. Yeah. So it's long term, like they can actually right. gain an apprenticeship, become journey people, mm -hmm. get benefits and uh, okay. pensions, uh, as well as a good income. Yeah, that, 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 the reality is, and, and while we have been able to entertain projects like that, sometimes a little further afield, like so, you know, the Northwest, etc., uh, typically it's a, it's, it's a challenging labor issue. To, to get into that, there's, there's a, a lot that, that goes into uh, 
that kind of project is something we're looking to do more, in particular uh, yeah, uh, First Nations Indigenous hiring? Yeah. It's something that needs to be made a requirement in the RFP. This is an internal, uh, so there wasn't a proposal, it wasn't a construction proposal external, it was using internal workforce. Oh, okay. So we have internal construction resources. If okay. we do tender for external, okay. uh, there's sometimes there's uh, requirements or certain like content in the, in the company, so if it was another project potentially uh, indigenous uh, employment, stuff like that is part of it, but there's no, uh, nothing I'm aware of for local, plus it's internal resources. Yeah, and, it, and not that it helps this particular project, but we do have a number of uh, partnerships with uh, post-secondary institutions to encourage uh, at-risk youth and, uh, and youth involvement in apprenticeships, finding apprenticeships, jobs for them, etc. There's a very, very big co-op and new grad program that we have at Hydro One. A lot of it does feed from the City of Toronto. So while you may not see Runnymede people building the Runnymede station, uh, we draw a, a lot of our workforce from uh, youth and apprentices from, uh, from the areas where we have Okay, can we then, uh, as um, uh, residents suggested, can we then, for instance, our youth here, who will be able to actually be given that kind of opportunity? Is there a way that can be considered for our youth who are unemployed here in order for opportunities to take that opportunity and increase it in that regard? Because here we have tons of young people who are living in the neighborhood where we are working at who are looking for jobs and opportunities. Maybe mm -hmm. even like marketing to our area, like telling students how they can get involved with Hydro One apprenticeship programs, whether they work here or not. It would be just to, you know, since we're here, market right into this neighborhood as part of the benefit. You know, letting kids know they can join up with the apprenticeships and the, and the co-op programs. It's for our social media channel. That's fair. Yeah, that's that's certainly something yeah. we can. You know, I mean, they, they don't guarantee any location, location but at least. Employment. But, but it is part of the whole project that you're already doing. It could just be an enhancement where you're actually target marketing for the youth in the area. And that, at least you're then answering to these ideas, perhaps. Yeah, that's entirely reasonable. This is phase two now, right, I guess? Like, when we originally heard about it, I don't remember hearing about the other stuff coming down. Yeah. So there's an opportunity here now for a second, a second phase to think about some sort of employment or reach out to the youth. Yeah. Because it's the second stage. If I only knew about stage one, and now we're getting stage two, so maybe there's an opportunity to do something different with that part. I mean, I think the original project was 60 million, right? It must be double that if you're doing more work. That's what I saw from the press. I mean, I can't believe everything you see in the press, but if it's a 60 million dollar project, there must be some room for employment opportunities for youth in the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, we have. To be cautious about our, our, our labor mix and, and, and the like, but uh, I think that the, the marketing plan approach to uh, you know to, to encouraging, maybe it's not to build the Runnymede station, but to encourage yeah. the neighborhood to take part in our programs, look at what, uh, maybe if there's an, an, an engagement with local social uh, organizations that can you know, help provide like legs up. Foundation, um, yeah, and, and to be honest, foundation. I would... Uh, well, we do that at the city. Yeah, yeah that's, that's certainly done at the city. And the, the, the city. province has programs as yeah. well. But as much as, uh, you know, you, a counselor and MPP is on, yeah. uh, if we could like want to discuss what's available yeah. at those levels of government, we're very, very open to entertain that conversation. Even just to put a push on this neighborhood for the youth in the marketing of, of what you're already doing. We are one of the largest employers of, uh, of, of youth apprentices in, in Ontario, if not in Canada. Yeah. So very, this very high some numbers. of our so kids it's, to you. you. You're speaking to our values, yeah. and, and we'll do what we can to, to, to work on that. I wanted to talk about one more thing about the, the garden meeting place is an exciting idea. Um, one of the things that we found last summer, I did several festivals in the garden last summer, and we met in and around the shady tree because, in fact, what happened was it's so darn hot in those gardens, there's no shade, and it was just wilting, and we had to get, you know, the umbrellas and the whole thing, and it was, that was the big key, was that if you didn't have an umbrella or a tree, people were just going to just die in that heat. And of course, under the we're right under the wires, and I don't know if that makes it seem hotter or what's going on, but it's just like it's a cook zone. Is there any way that you could incorporate some sort of shading in that seating area, be it trees that don't get too high or 
an umbrella or two, like they have at Sand, what is it called, Sugar Beach, you know, that kind of, I know they're very expensive umbrellas at Sugar Beach, but it's a penny gravy, you know that those are very expensive umbrellas down there. Very expensive. Very expensive umbrellas. a lot of bad <laughs> But is there any way, yeah. Is there any way that we could have a little bit of shade down yeah, yeah, yeah. a very, or maybe a very basic gazebo kind of thing? Just we, with a, with a we have to get creative. We're, we're very, from a safety and reliability perspective, very, very strict on structures not being built in the wire zone. Okay. We have to be very cautious about that. I know it doesn't look like you're close to the wires, yeah, no, but it is right kinda, the wires. when it gets hot, those wires sag, and when people use a lot of power to decline, that sags more, which happens in the summer. So we have to build with like, the worst potential swathes yeah. involved. Yeah. So a gazebo seems innocuous, but it might not be. What we can do is look at what other, maybe more creative solutions there can be to either cool or provide some degree of shade. Well, the umbrellas. Uh, but we'd have to avoid a structure. Even an eight foot kind of structure, everyone's, uh, most people are less than eight feet tall, but anything that would give us some shade, because I, I think it's a great idea. I, I, it's not my idea, yeah. but it, it is a really nice idea. Yeah, we're really happy about that part. We'll, yeah. we'll see what's available. We yeah. just have to be really cautious about that. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of what it would be. Electrical either. parking. It could even be, like right now, we're going outside and around to sit under the trees on the grass, because that's cool. So that paved area could end up being even hotter than the earth garden where we are meeting. Like we're already hot meeting on the soil where it's vegetation and soil and that would be cool to get up the water. So outside there that paved area could be ultra hot. Yeah, no, that's and, a good and, point. And, we'll uh, for us. We'll take a look at what yeah. options are available. Yeah. We might have to get creative, but we'll we'll see what we can do. Sorry to throw something more at you. Hey, that's what we're here for. <laughs> so, so if um, there, actually there was two issues that came up that I think that we need uh, comments on. First is the vegetation there on Cherry Drive, right yeah. the wall, um, because that was something that the community had asked for from day one, yeah. and as well is west of Scar uh, Scarlet Road along the corridor. That was mentioned as well in our first initial meeting, yes, yes. and so to um, to see if you can extend the the walkway and maybe do some maintenance work and do some work on that side of Scarlet Road as well. Agreed. So those two definitely we need to have a response. Yeah. Correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been tempted yeah. to start a bonfire. Yeah. Okay. Even though it's illegal. I, I want to make sure that those two are addressed because these two issues were brought up from day one. And they were very important issues, and uh, unfortunately, weren't addressed. And West of Scarlet has not been addressed. At least Correct? the fence, the, the, the road fence against that first property, uh, that has been taken care of. And now the, the guy's yeah. driveway but it, is blocked. But it's still, it's still a dumping site if you take a walk behind our house. Yes. So yeah. I just want to make sure that these two are brought forward. Uh, before, because as they mentioned, some of this work that, that they're doing starts in the spring of 2019. So we want to make sure that that's all being incorporated when they start the work. That's I just want to just make make sure that we do that, right? That's yeah. what's yeah. really required of Ohio yeah. One, but what we are trying, uh, trying to get, uh, get from you guys is the pavement going all the way to the end of uh, Eileen. Yeah, the, the, the walkway, that's what it is. Yes. 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 Yep. Yes. That's something that we have to take back yes. and run past our planners. And planters, it could because, believe me, I don't want to have to run out my house to assist someone who is being shot behind my house. We don't want that either. No. We don't want to see it. Yeah, I think the pruning and the maintenance is, is uh, so to speak, low-hanging fruit, so we'll, and the walk, uh, and the we'll walkway, include that in the plan. And the walkway, extend the walkway from yes, west to Scarlet. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah. So I uh, recommend if you have more questions or want to look at the panels, talk to staff, please uh, circulate around the room. We're all here at your disposal. And uh, please, any comments, the more we have written down with email addresses alike, everybody will get a response. That really helps us make sure that we've captured everything that was discussed.